IRS Special Agent Joseph Ziegler joins us now. Thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. Um, let me start with just the big picture here. What is your main allegation you're making about this investigation into Hunter Biden? Well, I wanted to thank you so much for having me on your show. I think it's important that your audience hears essentially what I presented facts yesterday in my testimony. So my main allegation is the equitable treatment of taxpayers. We have to treat every taxpayer the same in investigating our, our, our cases with Department of Justice. And I think that's important that everyone understands that, that, that to have a fair justice system, we need to treat people the same. This, it doesn't matter what your political beliefs are. It doesn't matter how much money you have. Everyone should be treated the same. Right. And the suggestion is that Hunter Biden was given special treatment and the uh, U.S. attorney did not um, go proceed as aggressively as he would have had Hunter Biden been someone else. Um, so David Weiss, as you know, the U.S. attorney said in a letter to Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan, quote, I have been granted ultimate authority over this matter, including responsibility for deciding where, when and whether to file charges. Uh, I read that earlier. It wasn't just in this letter. He said it in multiple letters. Do you think he's not telling the truth? So it's not, I don't know his intentions with what he stated there, but what I can tell you is the facts. I know, based on conversations I had with assigned prosecutors, that he went to the, the Washington, D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office bringing the case there. They told him no. He had to he wanted, bring, he wanted to charge Hunter Biden here in D.C., you mean? So he wanted to bring the case there in D.C. to charge for the 2014 and 2015 tax years. They told him no. And I think it's important that in his letter he said that his authority is geographically restricted to the District of Delaware. And if he needs to go outside of that, he needs to ask to partner with these other U.S. attorney's offices. And if they say no, then he needs to ask for that special attorney authority. And he was assured that. The special Not, counsel authority. No, he says special, special attorney, attorney okay. authority. And I think it's important that you understand that they haven't turned over a document that says, here's the letter where we gave him the special attorney authority. And... All we're trying to do is say that if, if, if this were anyone else, if this were uh, Joe, Joe taxpayer, he would be getting a much different treatment than what was at place here. Well, you're saying that there would be other charges in other jurisdictions. Is that, is that, what, I'm, is that what I'm taking from this? So the, the prosecutors assigned to this case. Because he was charged. I mean, he did have a plea agreement. and there, I mean, there, he is going to go before a judge. I mean, it's not like he's not facing anything. I, I, I'm not excusing it, but I'm just saying there are these allegations and he is going to face a, a, a courtroom proceeding, etc. So the four assigned prosecutors of the case agreed with recommending felony and misdemeanor tax charges for Hunter Biden. Mm -hmm. David Weiss also agreed with that. And I know that from a meeting that I had with him in late August, early September. And on top of that, you have um, David Weiss essentially, so they all agreed to charging this, the felony and misdemeanor. So DOJ, DOJ policy on this mm -hmm. is that, their tax policy is that if you have a felony with a misdemeanor, you have to charge the felony. And that's to prevent an equitable treatment of taxpayers. And they didn't do that is what you're saying. And according to the charging document, they only charged two misdemeanors and one of those tax years related to 2018. So let me just uh, give you an opportunity to respond to some of the things that Democrats uh, on Capitol Hill are saying. First of all, they're saying, why would a Trump appointed U.S. attorney, David Weiss, lie? So I have no idea what his, what his motives or what his beliefs are. All I can do is present the facts to Congress mm -hmm. and it's for them to determine and the American people and the administration to make the proper decision on how to move forward. So let me ask you another question. So you're a 13 year veteran of the IRS, is that correct? I am. Okay, is this the most high profile, most potentially politically sensitive case you've ever, you've ever worked on? Yeah, I would say so. And, and uh, when you say that you saw abnormalities in this case, um, like what other cases are you comparing it to? Just the, the normal Joe taxpayer case. So I'm actually working an even bigger case than this. Not as sensitive as this, but an even bigger case than this. And I can tell you the assigned prosecutors in that case have not acted anywhere near what we were going through, being constantly hamstrung, not following normal process. The, the storage unit location that we wanted to do the search warrant on. Mm -hmm. I think that it's important for people to understand that we had a plan to move forward even David Weiss agreed with that plan 
But then they were at the same time telling defense counsel that we know about this storage unit and that you need to turn over the records. So we were relying on him and his counsel to turn over those records to the government versus us going and getting those records. So another, you testified yesterday you wanted to interview President Biden's uh, grandchildren, uh, Hunter's grown, grown children, right? Mm -hmm. They're adults. Um, but you were told, no, you couldn't. Um, even without those interviews, you still had enough evidence in your view uh, to recommend charges because he was deducting things related to them that he, he wouldn't be allowed to, to deduct in his taxes, right? I mean, so you already knew the crime had happened. You didn't, the argument would be, you don't need to talk to, his hunt, to Hunter's adult children. You already have the evidence that what he did was wrong. Um, so tell me why, why that's not a satisfactory answer. So when we work our tax cases, and it's an expense that is deducted for, as a business expense on someone's tax return, you have to essentially, they're presumed that that's a business expense until you prove that it's not. So part of it is going to the third party to get those records. That's one step. And then interviewing that person to determine why was that, why was that expense made. And then a lot of times, those witnesses could lead you to other things. They could lead you to other evidence, expenditures that might have that might have been re made related to them. So obviously, it's a politically sensitive case, and I don't disagree with you that theoretically everybody should be treated equally before the law and, and in investigations like this. Um, one question I have is, and because we hear Democrats saying this, that you and Shapley have not pr pr produced any evidence of criminality by President Biden. Is that when they say that? Is that correct? So what I can tell you and what we stated yesterday, we are working with the House Ways and Means. We are... To get President Biden's taxes? No, it's we are working with the House Ways and Means to any records that Congress has asked for related to this investigation. We are working through the process. They can vote on whether or not to release those to the full Congress. And that's the process that is a part of being a whistleblower. So... This was cited, uh, and you were called before the committee um, because uh, they're talking about the House Republicans are saying that the federal government has been weaponized against conservatives and Republicans. Uh, they give any number of examples of there being very aggressive treatment of Republicans, uh, and in their view, in their characterization, uh, kid glove treatment for Democrats. Um, you are a self-described Democrat. You worked at the IRS for 13 years. Is that an accurate description based on what you've witnessed in those 13 years? So I'm not going to speak to the, the weaponization of, of the government because I don't think that's appropriate for me. I'm just going to present the facts as I know them. I think one of the big things that I mentioned yesterday was we need to have an independent attorney with authority to come in here and see and make sure that things were done correctly to the law. And I think it's important that there, there may be ancillary offshoot cases from this that are sensitive, that need to be investigated appropriately, that may not have venue in Delaware, so we don't run into that same exact problem. And that's all, all I'm trying to say, is that we need to have someone in there to look at that. Do you know of criminal charges against Hunter Biden that were not filed, that definitively there is evidence, proof that they should be filed, that he should be facing justice for? So again, meeting with the attorney, assigned attorneys, we all, and that included Department of Justice tax attorneys, all agreed for felony and misdemeanor tax charges related to 2017, 2018, and 2019. I didn't see that in the charging document that was filed in Delaware. And, and those charges would have been for what, undeclared income? So it would have been a false return tax charge, so it's 72061, and a false or uh, I'm sorry, tax evasion, so 7201, so it, evading your income taxes. So you tell me, because you're the expert, not me, is it not possible that in the dealings with the Hunter Biden attorneys, they just agreed, okay, we'll drop this in exchange for a plea of guilty, because that does happen. So I can tell you there's a lot of cases around the U.S. right now where people are being charged with both the felony and misdemeanor and not having the felony dropped off. So I think it's important that it's in the it's in the it's in the tax manual their policy that states that if you have the felony and you have the evidence there and there is also a misdemeanor you have to charge the felony in order to not have an equitable treatment of taxpayers. And so in your mind 
Should Hunter Biden be sentenced to jail, sentenced to prison? Is that what you think justice would look like based on the crimes committed? So again, I'm not here about, about Hunter Biden. I'm here about the bigger, bigger picture of all of this. I blew the whistle because I saw inappropriate things being done throughout this investigation. I brought facts. I brought things that had happened as I recalled them to Congress. My supervisor, Gary Shapley, did the same thing. And I think it's important for the American people, don't read our transcripts. Yeah. Read the transcripts because we did that under oath. We can be, if we said something, if we lied, willfully lied in that, that, that that's so important that read what we said and you can determine for yourselves one way or the other. Do you think that it's possible that because this was the president's son, there were extra sensitivities and extra protocols because of that that would have been extended to an investigation of a Republican president's son or daughter as well? But, but And since this is the highest profile, biggest, most sensitive uh, investigation you ever were part of, you weren't used to that, but that really is just generally what happens when it has to do with any powerful family, any powerful, and again, I'm, I'm not excusing it, yeah. but I'm just saying like, I'm wondering if this is just how like the DuPonts would be treated or, you know, cause you're from Delaware. Uh, you <laughs> no, know, I'm from Georgia. Oh, okay. But you're working in Delaware. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like that any powerful family might be treated with kid gloves like this. Again, I'm not saying that's right, but that maybe that's what happened. Yeah, and, and to that point, I mean, I think it's important that I understood that it was a politically sensitive case. I'm completely aware it, he was an attorney. Records had to go through a filter review. So I'm completely aware of all those problems. And that's why I think it's important that we have an independent attorney who has authority, so a special counsel, independent attorney, that can get in there and, and make sure that things are done correctly and that the, that the proper charges are brought, that would restore faith in our justice system. Well, I know it's not an easy thing to be a whistleblower. I know it's not an easy thing to walk into the public and say things like this, and you're going to be attacked. You were attacked before by Trump people who thought that you were, you were part of a conspiracy, and likely you're going to be attacked by the other side now. Uh, Joseph Ziegler, thank you so much uh, for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.